Okay, today I'm going to be going through a carburetor on a 2003 Polaris Sportsman 500. It's going to be similar to the Polaris Sportsman 400 and a couple of the Polaris ATV models. Uh, maybe possibly different jet sizes, maybe different needle sizes. I can leave those in the comments below. We've got the cables that we pulled off with the carburetor here. Typically, when you're just going to pull this carburetor off to clean and rebuild it, you would leave these cables attached to the actual four-wheeler and just pull them off on a couple different places here, and I'll show you where those are. But I wanted to show you how to do that with the carburetor removed so you can get a better idea. First thing here is your choke cable. That's going to be this cable with this knob here on the end, and then you're going to have your plunger, cap, and spring that sits right here. So to remove this, I take a 12 millimeter wrench there, loosen that up. Once you loosen it just a little bit, a lot of times you can just take and turn it out uh, with your hands. That's a lot easier than trying to get your wrench on there over and over again. So take and pull it out. Your plunger and your spring are going to come with it. Then to pull the plunger off of the cap here, off of the cable, I like to unwind these because they're doesn't leave a whole lot of room here. You can see when that cable's wound up, you can see there's not a, a lot of room there with that spring. If you unwind it then, that gives you a little more room to work. So unwind that cable there, and then you can see we've got quite a bit more area with the spring. And then I'm gonna take two fingers there, pull that back, pull that plunger off just like that, and then you're able to take that spring off. Got an, pull this rubber cap back a little bit. You've got an eight millimeter uh, area for a wrench here, then your 12 millimeter area here, you can just take and spin that off. That cap will just pull right over top of that cable there. Then you can take and set that aside. That'd be if you wanted to leave the cable on the four wheeler, that way you're not dragging that cable uh, underneath your fuel tank. Uh, you can just leave that attached. Next to get your throttle cable off here, it goes under this cover here with three Phillips screws. And a lot of times these are tight, so you wanna leave these clamps tight on this carburetor before you remove these. Uh, then you can just take your screwdriver, loosen them up. Underneath here, you're gonna have a, a little rubber O-ring that you wanna make sure is seated when you're going back together, and you wanna make sure that that O-ring is good. If you get fuel or carb cleaner on it, a lot of times what I'll do is set it in a windowsill to try to shrink it down a little bit, dry it out, because that, that fuel or that carb cleaner's going to allow that to stretch and it doesn't sit in there properly and you want that to seal up so you're not filling this area full of dirt. So take that and set it aside. Then you've got an eight millimeter uh, bolt right here that you can remove and that'll remove that cable. So underneath this boot is an eight, eight millimeter uh, area here that you can put a wrench on. Take and you can start spinning that out. I like to get a little bit loose there. And then you can take your butterfly here and lift it up just like this. Now I take a pick then, and I'll just drag that cable out from behind that pivot point there, and then that will come up with it. So you can just take and slide that off then. Now your cable is ready to come out of there. You can just take and unscrew it back here. Now we're able just to take and unscrew that cable. Now that's completely off as well. Next, here is your idle screw when you're, when you're on the, when the carburetor is on the four-wheeler, you can just take, a lot of times use your hands just to turn this knob here. If you need to turn it clockwise, it's going to turn your idle up. Counterclockwise is going to turn it down. So you want to make sure your four-wheeler is completely warmed up before you go and do that. And you want to make sure you just turn it small increments at a time so that you are not throwing your idle way off when your four-wheeler gets warmed up. What that's doing is opening that butterfly a little bit if you're just doing about a quarter turn at a time you're not going to be able to see the difference in that butterfly there um, but if you take and do that three or four turns that's going to open that butterfly up substantially you're going to be idling way too high there so also with your throttle cable when you go to adjust your throttle cable you've got a spot on the cable here where you can adjust it pull these rubber boots apart there and then it's going to do the same thing it's just going to put pressure on this cable there um, but that's more for your thumb throttle. You don't want to adjust your idle with that throttle cable. So keep that in mind. You want to adjust, only adjust your idle with your turn knob that's going to be underneath your carburetor. Then the most important part on a carb clean is to pull this bottom bowl off here. You can, if you want to drain the fuel out of the four-wheeler for the year, you can take and pull this plug here. Uh, that's a, I believe a 19 millimeter plug. You can just take that fuel, will just drain out. You can actually pull your 
uh, main jet out just by pulling that plug there. But to do a good carb clean, you're gonna pull this bowl completely off and go through it with compressed air. Also draining your fuel for the year, you can take a Allen wrench there, loosen this plug, and you've got a nipple on the bottom here that fuel will drain out of. So you wanna make sure you've got a, a drain hose on there, otherwise that uh, fuel is gonna drain directly on top of your motor and discolor your motor. So. You can loosen this a couple turns, fuel is going to start dumping out there. This is also the overflow um, nipple here where that fuel is going to dump out. Uh, if your car or if your four wheeler is bouncing around on bumps or gets to be too much fuel down in this bowl area, fuel is going to come out that bottom tab there. Take your Phillips screwdriver and loosen these two bolts here, remove these two bolts. And these sometimes can be fairly tight depending on the person before you that clean the carburetor. If they are too tight to pull out with a screwdriver, I suggest you using an impact driver very carefully because this is an aluminum carburetor. So if you use an impact driver, just be really careful. Otherwise, a lot of times you can get vice grips on there and get a pretty good hold on there to loosen these up. You just wanna make sure you replace those screws after you do that uh, because the next time you go to clean your carburetor, you're gonna have the same problem if those screws are damaged. So here's your bowl here. If we were to remove that 19 millimeter cap on the bottom here, you would actually be able to see out right through here. This is the overflow that I was talking about here. There's a small port that fuel that's sloshing around in your bottom bowl area can, um, can go out this port here. That's gonna dump out this bottom nipple here. So if you've got a needle and seat that's leaking, that's gonna fill this bowl up with fuel and it's gonna start dumping out here. So if you've got a bad needle and seat, you want to make sure uh, that this port here is clean otherwise that fuel is just going to dump directly onto the uh, directly down into the cylinder of the four-wheeler and could cause an explosion going back together you want to make sure that this o-ring is in good condition make sure that it's not dry rotted make sure that it's um, not cracked in any areas if you've got a carb kit for it this o-ring is going to be included with that I've never seen a carb kit that does not have this O-ring. So make sure you replace that if, you are, if you've got a carb kit. Now the, the float on this four-wheeler here is a little bit different than most other style of floats. You wanna be really careful removing this and all it is is simply just pulling it up and you've got a couple O-rings that hold this in place and I'll show you those. Just be really careful pulling it up because this is all plastic here. So you've got one O-ring right here and that's gonna sit in this area here. And then back behind here, um, your bowl is actually gonna hold these two posts, these two plastic posts down, and that's what holds your float in place. This is an adjustable float, so if you need to make an adjustment on this needle here, there's a metal tab here that you just wanna make uh, small adjustments when you're doing that. I don't suggest making those adjustments to uh, fix the the issue with your four-wheeler leaking fuel it would just be if you're needing to get more fuel to the cylinder uh, not necessarily because you've got uh, gas on the floor of the shop every time you come in if you do have gas on the floor of the shop when you um, after you're done riding it's because this needle here is uh, destroyed or being held up or this seat right here is destroyed and you can see on this one here it's somewhat squared and that's what happens after um, some time of use, these seats become squared. You can get new needle and seats for a fairly reasonable price online. So you wanna make sure that you uh, replace these when you go through your carburetor if you're needing to. Just inspect those, make sure these aren't squared, make sure this rubber tip is good, make sure it's not grouped, make sure there's no debris in this seat area here. There's what your float looks like on the bottom side there. Your needle is just gonna slide on there. There's a, there's a little metal clip that's just gonna slide on top of that metal piece there. And it's a little bit of a challenge going back together. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, make sure that you have it positioned right. So then moving on with the uh, main jet here, which is on the top, I like to use a little bit larger screwdriver to remove this. This is the larger of the two jets. We've got, uh, I believe this is a 140, 142.5, so 142 and a half. And this, this port on this is gonna be fairly large. And a lot of times when your four-wheeler isn't running right or isn't starting, these jets get pl plugged up and that's the most common problem with these carburetors. If these four-wheelers sit for any amount of time at all, 
uh, you're gonna you're gonna have fuel that's gonna get gummed up and you're gonna need to clean these jets out. You can use jet cleaners. They're just small wires that are ribbed. Run those up and down through there. Make sure that that uh, orifice is completely cleaned out. Also, carbon choke cleaner and compressed air. Just make sure that there's no debris sitting in there. You've got this little cap here. Going back together, I'll show you the direction that that goes on, but keep that in mind so you don't lose that. Uh, we've got your... Uh, pilot jet that sits down in this port here. And that's gonna be a very, very small orifice on this pilot jet. You wanna make sure that you've got uh, a small enough screwdriver that's gonna fit down in there, but you don't want it too small to where it just uh, strips out the top of that jet there. Take and spin that out. You can just take and dump it out. And there's your pilot jet there. It looks like this. And this is a 40, so it measures 40. And you can, again, replace these if needed, or you can clean these out. Just make sure you can see through there. If you hold it up to light, you should be able to see all the way through this pilot jet. I also like to take carbon choke cleaner and spray through it, even if I can see just to clean out anything uh, that could possibly be stuck in there. I'm going to leave all those jets out there at this time. and I'm going to flip this carburetor over. Our seat here also can be replaced. There's an O-ring down here that needs to be inspected. Make sure that's in good condition. When your fuel comes in from your fuel tank or your fuel pump on this model, it's gonna come in this port here. It's gonna run down here. It's gonna come out through here. It's gonna run through your seat and then your needle is gonna allow that fuel to be shut off and turned on when it's needed. Um, so that's why you wanna make sure that these are in good condition so that fuel isn't constantly draining into the bottom of your carburetor. Take and flip that up. We've got two screws on the top cap here that we're gonna remove. Again, same thing if these were over tightened uh, from the beginning, they're gonna be a challenge to, to come off of there. Just wanna be really careful that you don't break these two posts off here, trying to pull them out. If you're trying to get aggressive with it, just, just be careful you don't break those off or you'll be replacing your carburetor. You just can't uh, fix those that area. Take that cap. I like to put keep my finger on top here because it is it's got a spring behind it. Uh, it's not going to go flying across the room or anything, but I like to make sure that this diaphragm doesn't get destroyed when I'm pulling this cap off. So I like to just keep my hand on top of it. Here is the top cap here. You've got a long post, so you can't really screw up how that goes back together. You can take then. I like to use my finger to push up on that slide there. It's going to bring up that needle uh, slide and that spring all together. Here is your spring that's going to be down in there. And then just don't take and dump this over without paying attention because you've got a needle in there, you've got a spacer, you've got a clip and uh, another plastic cap there. So I like to take and push that up with my finger. You can just take, push that up and down just like that. Take that cap then, pull it off of there, set that aside. Then you've got your needle, you've got a clip and this, this needle is adjustable. There is five different settings. This is typically, it's going to be in the middle one. And these needles are different sizes as well. A lot of times with the adjustable needles, uh, people won't just go and replace a needle if they add performance exhaust to the machine, different, different cylinder bore or different valves, stuff like that. They're not going to replace the needle. They're just going to replace or change where this clip sits at. So you've got a plastic wash below that clip there. Set that aside. Now you take compressed air, you can blow all this out. You can uh, use carbon choke cleaner to clean all this up. And uh, there's a couple different ports here. You wanna make sure that are clean and, and make sure that fuel can flow through there or air. Um, also looking down uh, through this port here, you're gonna be able to see where your uh, plunger sits. So your plunger for your choke is gonna slide in here. You're gonna be able to see that through that port there. Also on top of there, you're gonna be able to see that. So you should be able to see all the way through that port there that goes up to the top. So taking uh, spray, compressed air, and carbon choke cleaner, clean this all up really good, and then we can go back together with it. Go back together, just make sure that that clip is on, make sure that that spacer is underneath there. I like to grab a small pair of pliers then and position this right down in the center of this carburetor there. Slide that down. I take my plastic cl clip there, or the uh, stop, and it sits in that position there. It sits in a groove down there and holds that needle in, so make sure that that's seated properly. 
All right, we've got the plastic clip in there in the right direction and where it needs to be. Then we can take our spring, set it down in there. Next thing I like to do is take this diaphragm here after you inspect it, make sure it's um, clean, make sure there's no rips, make sure it's not weathered or cracked or anything. I like to put it in this position there. That helps me when we're going back together. Um, if you, same thing as that, uh, those O-rings that I talked about earlier, if you get fuel or carb cleaner on this diaphragm here, it likes to expand, which makes it really hard to put this back together. So I didn't get any carbon choke cleaner on it this time, so we're just gonna go back together. The other thing you wanna keep in mind when you're going back together is that your needle sits in the correct position. You can see that it's not straight there. It's because it's not in the correct position. So you take and you can use your fingers or you can take and pull that slide out a little bit to make sure that it's seated properly and goes down in there. Then I take and I, I put my finger underneath that slide a little bit so that our, our slide and diaphragm doesn't go completely seated. You can take and push that down. I just like to keep the, this area here so it's gonna be flat with this carburetor, sits in that groove. Then we can take our cap, slide it on, still keeping my finger underneath that slide there so we don't push that diaphragm out of its groove there. Slide that on, then take our two uh, s screws there that are gonna go on top and install those. These are gonna be smaller, these are the bowl screws and these are the screws that I'm putting on now so these are gonna be substantially smaller. Make sure you use the right ones. These, these shorter ones aren't barely gonna be long enough to fit down on that bowl there. So just make sure you use the right ones the first time. All right, we'll take and snug these two screws up. And then once you get them snug, make sure that diaphragm isn't gonna move out of the place there. You can let go and you wanna make sure that that slides up and down freely. You can also take compressed air and carefully blow through here. That acts as the air that's gonna be flowing through that carburetor and it's gonna lift that slide up. And that needle runs down in that main jet area. And so if you need to replace the main jet, um, just keep in mind that, that that's how that fuel flows. So if you've got uh, fuel, if you've got mid throttle or about half throttle, that uh, fuel is gonna be flowing through that main jet area at a pretty good rate. So you wanna make sure that you have the right main jet on there to restrict it when it needs restricted. I told you I was gonna show you how that cap sits. It's gonna sit over top of this area here. So if you're putting it in this position here, it's not gonna work. You're gonna slide it over top there. You're gonna take your main jet, put it on there. Use a large enough screwdriver because if you take and use a screwdriver like this, turn it in there, what you're gonna do is gonna turn inside of this jet here. This is a brass jet. You can really uh, do some damage to that jet if you don't use the right size screwdriver. So take and tighten that down, our pilot jet, after we've cleaned all this out with compressed air and carbon choke cleaner, drop that down in there. Take your smaller screwdriver and you can start screwing that in. You wanna make sure that that screwdriver is actually seated properly on that pilot jet so that you're not damaging that as well. We've got your seat area there, set that down in there. And then we've got our needle that uh, is ready to go on. You want to make sure that that sits right in the middle of that hole there when you're going back together. So kind of hold that in place there. Also, you want to keep in mind this O-ring here and this, this plastic tab is going to fit down into its area. And that needle is going to drop off of there. So just take and redo it. You want to pay close attention to where that needle falls because uh, you want that going in the right position. And you can take and push that uh, that plastic tab down in there, make sure that that O-ring seals properly. And then if you've got your main jet tight, your, your pilot jet tight, your float is in the right position there. You can see there that uh, right here is gonna hold, this area here is gonna hold this down. So that's not gonna be able to move all over the place. We're gonna take and set that down in there. And this uh, aluminum tab here is gonna sit down in there. And then make sure that that O-ring is good on that bowl so that it is not gonna leak fuel out of that area there. 
And then we'll take and put these two Phillips screws on once that's all seated properly. Our choke plunger and our spring and stuff, I'm just gonna slide that in there for now just to keep it in place. So I'll slide that plunger in there, gonna slide that spring in there. I'm gonna take that cap and just screw that in just so we know where that's at so when we get ready to go back on the four-wheeler, uh, we those don't come up missing. So that is the carb clean on a 2003 Polaris Sportsman 500. If you've got questions on this model, make sure you let me know. I'll do several other videos on some maintenance, uh, kind of an overview of the four-wheeler, uh, replacing CV boots and CV shafts and going through the transmission, stuff like that. Thanks for watching.